All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. We got our first figs of the season. We have some Brabas that are ripe. And what I'm gonna do in today's video, guys, is I'm gonna take you guys around to a couple of the trees that are ripening Brabas or have Brabas on them. By the way, the Braba is the first crop. It usually forms, it can only form on last year's growth. So all this new growth here that the tree has produced has the new figs, the main crop. This last year's wood here in the fall produces fruit buds that then fruit on that wood early in the season. Today is July 8th. Um, actually, a few days ago, we picked our first Braba that's uh, over here. We'll show you guys that in a minute. But this is typically the time of the year in my climate that we start to see ripe Braba that haven't received any sort of uh, head start from a greenhouse or some sort of plastic. But we're gonna, we're gonna look at some of the trees that have Braba. We're gonna look at um, the varieties, the fruits themselves. I'm gonna taste one of the varieties actually. But very soon I wanna make you guys know, I wanna make this known is that we're gonna actually be cooking these fruits. Is that we have a storm coming in very soon. I don't know if you guys heard any of that thunder I'm gonna pick this. And uh, you can tell it's not really ripe just yet. You get all that sap coming out. And I knew it wasn't ripe. But we're gonna cook this. And instead of letting them kinda hang out here in the rain, because this is such a large piece of fruit, um, and also because I don't necessarily like Brabas all that much, they're typically not very good. Um, the main crop usually surpasses the quality in almost all the varieties. There are some exceptions, but usually it surpasses the quality of the Braba. So I usually go for main crop. I don't even normally bother with Brabas. You can tell, by the way, it is a Braba because it is below the leaves. So this is last year's wood. The leaves are the new wood. So anything below the leaves below all of the leaves on a particular branch is considered a Braba. Uh, we even have some over here on this particular variety. Let's see here, there's one right there. You can see again, um, it is below the leaves. However, there's a leaf right here, right? So that's kind of confusing. But this is a new bud that is that was expanding and trying to put out a new leaf. You can see the difference in the color of the bark. See how this is brown and this is more of a gray or silver color. So the fruits that form on this silverish wood is usually older and therefore it's, it's last year's wood. Therefore it's a Braba. I've also noticed, by the way, and I'm sure a lot of people can test to this, that a lot of Brabas tend to have longer, longer necks. That's another way of kind of telling that it is a Braba compared to the, the main crop. So the shape is usually different. The size could be a lot different, particularly because, you know, you have a lot of energy that's being focused into, let's say one or two fruits. If you don't have a lot of Braba, like this is only two, it was one on each of the trees. A lot of that energy that the tree is, um, you know, producing early in the season will go towards this one fruit and therefore it'll be a larger fruit. It's kind of like thinning your fruit, you know? When you have, you know, more fruits to, uh, on the tree, they typically are smaller, or potentially less sweet, right? So it's the opposite, right? That a lot of the energy gets put towards the Bravas uh, if limited in quantity, and therefore you have quite a bit of them. Here's another variety over here called Salato. It has a very elongated neck to the Brava. Uh, there's another one over here. A lot of them, by the way, as I've said, I, I don't really prefer the Brava over the main crop. So I, historically, I, I don't even keep the Brava, but sometimes I'm very curious. I wanna see what the Bravas are like. Here's another one down here. Um, the reason why I don't like the Brava is again, they're usually lower in quality. And, and the reason for that because you might be thinking, well, if you thin the fruits, right, if you have less of the fruits, you should have a higher bricks, higher quality, right? But early in the season, you know, there's a lot of water that my, my trees inevitably get. Things are colder. 
And throughout the progression, the life cycle of these bravas, they inevitably uptake more water. Because I've talked about this a lot here, guys, is that if you give your fig trees water, anything in excess after the fruits have formed, that isn't you know, just enough to keep the tree happy and healthy, anything in excess of that, that water is then stored, not just in the branches, it goes in the leaves, but it also goes in the fruits and it's stored in the fruits, uh, in the roots as well. So the fig tree is kind of like a cactus in that sense, is that it really likes to store water. It's very good in drought situations for that reason. So if you were to actually water your tree a lot, after these fruits have formed, which is almost impossible to avoid here, and it's something you really want to do. You want to water your trees a lot early in the season to help them grow. You know, it's really the on or off switch of the growth of a fig tree. So that's just a, a big one there, I think, is the big reason why I, I don't necessarily like them. And then, of course, they slow the, they slow the progression or the development of the main crop. So this one here is um, called Verdone. I don't know if I mentioned that. But this tree is uh, quite impressive. I'm actually a big fan of this tree. It's been very unhealthy for the most part. And what I would like to do is air layer this this season. I will air layer it this season. I've rooted a few cuttings already, but I want to put, um, I want to put this tree in the ground and get it healthy more established and produce more fruits. I really like the fact that it's more elongated. The fruits themselves are quite impressive. This Braba is not going to be very impressive at all, but again, we're cooking these as I guess I sort of, I sort of got into in that we're going to cut these in half and look at them, but I'm going to go inside and cook them um, with a little bit of coconut oil and add some sugar, and we're going to see how figs turn out like that. I haven't done it before. I've done it with other fruits like bananas. Um, some people grill things like peaches. So we're gonna kind of do something similar with the fig. And it's probably better if they're a little bit less or on the less ripe side to help keep their structure to it. So that's kind of why we picked this in addition to the rain that's coming in. There's gonna be a lot of rain that comes in today, especially tonight. Um, but yeah, I, I'm quite impressed with this. I really like the shape of the fig, how it's more elongated. And it does seem pretty good with uh, production and productivity, although again, it's just not very healthy. Um, the flavor is great. I've tried that fig before. Um, the main crop I'm really is what I'm really impressed with. This one here again is called Juale Noir. This fig also is quite impressive. Um, this is it right here. And you can see it's got these really long, long necks, even some long stemmed figs to them, which is great. Again, more of these elongated shapes mean that they, they tend to split a lot less. And uh, this is a favorite of somebody, uh, a commercial grower in um, Malaysia. So we'll see, you know, if he really knows what he's talking about in terms of these the flavor of these figs this is one that I happen to uh, to pick up so we're gonna cut that open as well as this put these guys over here because what I also have is a really tasty Braba that actually is worth eating um, it's called little Ruby and this is actually from an in-ground tree so that's pretty it's pretty special just because as I said, the Braba forms on the last year's wood. And a lot of times here in this climate, our trees just don't survive the winter. So if you don't have any last year's wood that you can preserve because of, let's say the cold kills the wood, you don't get any Braba. This tree has produced about four Braba. You can see them down in here. Very odd shape. They're uh, got a longer neck and they're very round. It's typical of this variety very round fig and therefore it tends to split and has a little bit of a more open eye. What's very interesting about this fig is that uh, it's very similar to a hardy Chicago. Like it doesn't look like a hardy Chicago in the shape 
the flavor is almost exact. The leaf pattern looks quite similar. This is more of a dwarf, very low vigor tree. And uh, I've already picked the Breba off of this. And you know what? It was the first fig of the year, guys. And I've been eating all these fruits. There's another point I really want to make is that I've been eating so many fruits this year. I really have. And I, I, I've been truly um, super lucky to be sort of in the position that I am uh, with the state of my orchard and all the work that I've done. And I've tried probably close to, I don't even know, this year, at least, you could say at least 10 different fruits. And a lot of them in really good quantity. And a lot of them are really impressive. Like I was having uh, Gumi, which has really been impressive. Uh, I've been eating black raspberries, which I think is incredible. The Marion berries are just now ripening. The honey berries I've been very, very impressed with. I love those gooseberries, the uh, Hinomaki red, and we had some apricots so far. We've had some peaches so far. I've had cherries so far. Uh, all the strawberries you can think of, even alpines, the white alpines, which are good in their own little way. Blueberries, handfuls and handfuls of blueberries. Um, so there's a lot of fruits that I've been eating and it's interesting to rank them and um, think about which ones are the best. And I, I kid you not, um, I ate this fig, I think it was yesterday, um, this little Ruby Breva, and it just reminded me instantly that figs are the best. And it wasn't even close. Like it wasn't even like, I have to think about this. Um, it just is the best fruit for me. Uh, that's just my opinion, I know. But um, it's like an instant reminder of not having a fig in like a real, really good fresh fig since what, like November? What is that, uh, eight months or something? Um, so, and then eating all these fruits and realizing like, holy crap, you know, I, I don't know. You, I really wish I got that moment and captured it, but it just is what it is. I didn't, wasn't able to do that. So this is the Breba. And by the way, this little Ruby Breba, this variety has not historically been that impressive. I have not been impressed with it. I don't like how dwarf it is and I don't like the shape of it. I think there's a purpose in because it is so dwarf and because it is, I think, relatively hardy, that it could make a dwarfing rootstock at some point, and that's kind of why I keep it around. Um, but it's, it, you know, it really has impressed me with these Brabas. Um, and I'm gonna get a lot of fruit off of it this year, although usually the fruits are so small and dainty that it's not even kind of worth eating like they're super small probably even smaller than the ruchelo de elba but yeah again it's just super impressive let me try this oh yeah guys i don't know what it is it's just this amazing sweetness that comes from this fruit It just has such, man, it's melting your mouth. It's so soft. It's so good. A little bit of berry flavor, mostly a figgy and sugarish flavor, but honestly, it's quite incredible. Um, let's see the Verdone. This, I guess I really should have waited. Yeah, this is not even close to being ripe. Wow. Who would have thought that it would be this unripe? That doesn't even look edible, but I think we'll still try to cook it. We'll still try to see, like I said, coconut oil. I'm gonna do a separate video. Coconut oil with some sugar on it. This one has been sitting in the fridge for a bit and I bet you it's actually pretty good. Um, it is ripe. Ooh, doesn't that look interesting? And look at the, <laughs> it almost looks fake. I mean, someone might see this that doesn't know what they're doing and think, holy crap, that doesn't look real. 
because this bottom portion there, see that, the difference? That's been in the fridge. It's split open and that sort of, that part of the pulp has started to dry up in the fridge. And it's just uh, a very different consistency, essentially, than the rest of it. And that's kind of why it looks like that. It's just been in the fridge. But that, yeah, that's actually quite impressive, I think, for, um, for a Brava. Let's see how this one tastes. I, I, maybe I won't actually cook this if it's good enough. We'll see. Oh, man. Huh. Wow. Holy crap. This fig is actually incredible. Okay, the flavor of it isn't that amazing. Nor is the sugar content. So it's kind of more on the bland side. But this is an extremely thick fig. This is so thick that it... I feel like I'm eating a cold Adam, and it's a Brava. Holy crap. Wow. Uh, unfortunate that the flavor isn't there. I, I mean, I guess I could just add some honey or add some, some sugar on top, and it would be perfect. I think I'll do that. I think I'm going to wait. Honestly, guys... Um, we will do some cooking of these figs, so if you were hopeful about that, we're not going to do that now, but I will be doing that at some point. Um, this fig, though, like I said, is just so impressive. Uh, holy crap, I was not expecting this at all. This one really goes higher up on my my list at this point. I was not, I was so so down on this because a lot of people in Malaysia just, um, well, not a, I don't want to be too judgmental, but um, the problem is, is that when you live in such a rainy place and you produce figs in such a rainy place, you know, I know because I live in a rainy place that the quality just isn't there. And um, it's so hard, I think, to judge, accurately judge a fig in such a climate especially if it's worse than myself. You know, if you guys live in the tropics, it's so much harder to grow figs there, unless you got some cover, that um, I just had serious doubts that how could anyone from that place make an accurate judgment because the figs, when you see photos of them and you look at them, they really just don't look very good. And you could tell they're just not very good. I mean, that's just the reality of it. They're just not. But uh, this is, Impressive, you know that guy. Know obviously must know what he's doing because this fig actually has a lot of. Um, this is a really highly flavored fig, and I'm I'd be very, uh, not highly flavored, perfectly textured fig. I'd be very interested to see what the main crops like because the Braba I'm sure is just not up to par, but. That's Juale Noir. We saw Little Ruby, and then this is Verdone. That's not even ripe. But uh, maybe I can still cook this or something or make this edible in some way. Problem is when it's filled with sap like this, it's just, it's super difficult. How misleading, right? Because look at the outside. It went from uh, green to this darker brown color, but, and it's soft. Uh, even the neck is a bit soft. So, very misleading. Anyway, that's the video here, guys, on the Bravas. That's the first figs of the year. We talked about the Brabas, we talked about the first figs, we talked about what you guys should expect and what I do for my Brabas. And uh, yeah, like I said, we'll be cooking these, so don't worry. I want to really experiment with that this year. We'll see you guys for the next one, all right? Hit that subscribe button. See you soon.